GoPro start recording. Hey everybody and welcome from Amaji Studio. My name is Agnes and this is my Arturia demo video number two. If you follow my channel, I'm pretty sure you saw my Arturia demo video number one, which you can just see right there. And by the way, as we speak, it has nearly 100,000 views. Yay! So thank you so much for all your support and the comments and to all my subscribers. This wouldn't be possible without you. That was completely unexpected. Seems like you absolutely loved it. And this is exactly the reason for my Arturia demo video number two. So after my follow-up tutorial with the Arturia MIDI control center, you probably have all the basics. And now is the time to use a Keylab in its full potential. So if you want to see how I set Arturia with Ableton Live, produce the track using Analog Lab, and at the end, final demo performance to inspire you, then don't go anywhere, it's the right video for you. And to top up even more, I have an amazing giveaway, which I will reveal at the end of this video. So please watch it to the end, because then I will ask the question, which you will have to answer in order to enter the drawing. Okay, enough talk, let's get into it. ideas. Let me open my Ableton. Quick recap, you go into options, preferences. Now, if you remember my video from the quick tip, port 2 here and the 61 here. Make sure track on, remote on. So that's all sorted. Now I need to make sure that my key lap is working. I'm leaving on the in. Um, this is basically turning Ableton uh, routing into so-called AUX. So basically, no matter what is happening in your door, you can always hear um, your controller or any instrument synthesizer, etc. Because when we switch to auto, I will have to then arm recording to be able to hear, otherwise you won't be able to hear it. So yeah, that's just easier. That's just me. All I always do in the beginning, I'm putting my initial ideas. So I would then go through all presets from Analog Lab, literally one by one, and just play with the MIDI controller, just, just try to find some ideas. I never starting any track with something in my head already. I probably know the um, BPM, but I never know what I'm gonna come up with at the end. I plan to make this track mostly based on Analog Lab. If I'm not gonna find some sound which I'm looking for, then I will swap to another VSTs. But my main goal here is to mostly use Analog Lab. Uh, purely because I believe it's got so many amazing instruments, especially synths, but also drums and bass. I can find something nice here, I'm sure I will. And then we will go through synths and pads and oh, we'll see. I don't really know what we're gonna come up with. Let's start. Bass presets first, and I'm not kidding, literally going one by one. It takes me forever, but that's just how it is. And I guess if you want to create something unique, then you definitely need to go through all of them. It's a lot of work. Okay, so let's just go one by one. Okay, that's definitely not a bass I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm looking for the bass, which will be like a sub bass, just for the low end, really. Yeah, let's do sub first. So I would do sub and types, bass. Yeah, that's 36 presets, thank goodness. Analog lab, yeah. Oh no, that's... Oh. That's nice. That wouldn't work. I'm looking for something like the sub bass more than anything, which will be like a proper nice deep sub. Ooh. I think we can use that. That will be my sub bass. Now, what I would do, I will then rename MIDI um, the preset I choose, because sometimes, I don't know, Ableton is crashing. I don't want to lose the sound which I choose, so I just always name it the track by the preset name. So that will be big sub. So I've got my sub. Next one, bass. Just a nice deep bass. So, bass. Okay. And da 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 da. Yeah. As I mentioned in the beginning, I don't really know what I want to do, so I just want to find the sound which I would like and then build from there. Okay. 
sad. Nah. That's not bad. I'm looking for more like a sequence type. Oh, maybe j let's just choose the sequence then. Yeah, let's just go with sequence. That's better. That's a nice bass. I would say that's more like a sub bass. Hmm. Or like a. That, that is exactly what I'm looking for. See, this is what I'm saying. You're going through presets and it's like blah, 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 sad, 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 and suddenly. Wow. I like it. That would be 70s. Stonehouse. Okay, that's a funny name. Stonehouse base. Okay. And how these two would sound together. got some kick this up I will have to get rid of it because it doesn't go together anyway um, fine so I would put some more bass because this is just a sequence but then we need a more bass sound so let's just um, start all over again dark bass well let's see Jesus That's not my style. Hmm, I don't like the resonance. And without this resonance, probably doesn't even sound that good. I love that. Oh, wow. I love this one. I think this will be... I think this might be actually my main beat because it's just such a beautiful, rich sound. Very 80s. Like, reminds me... It's even, it's even called the Emish, so it's the Pesh mod ish I love that one. Oh, wow. This is, like, awesome. I think that's my favorite sound so far. So it's a dm ish bass line. Love that one. I think there's a lot of nice basses here. I'll, I'll try maybe one more. Just one more. It's never too much of the bass, isn't it? It's just like you have to working out how you're then gonna layer with each other because phasing is a serious issue, especially with the bass, lower frequencies. Let's see, let's see. Cool, so what else we can find? I had this saved sound. This one gives this really the high frequency and it's just, you know, when you lay a bass, you need a sub part in the bass, the main bass, which is range of, you know, 80, 110. And then very often it sounds good if you're adding this high frequency as a final touch. This one definitely has this high frequencies, which I really like it. And then I will try to layer them all together. If I will just play to you guys how they sound together. See? Obviously proper EQing and stuff because, you know, they all have the same, fighting for the same frequency at the moment, but yeah, it's not that bad. So we just need to add the beat now, so drums, drums, drums. So far so good. Hmm. No, I can't find anything. Maybe just sequence. No. It's just this bass I don't really, but it. Let's sing on it. Oh, 
Oh, come on. Mm. Oh, we've got similar one already. Oh, again, that's very Depeche mode, my god. Whoa. Yeah, I've got that. Yeah, we've got that. Woodblock auto code, okay. So maybe this is not um, percussion, but I like the sound, so why not? Wood, wood block. All right. Let me just put drums and hope for the best. Right. Oh. I think we've got our beat. Let's see the others. It's all right, but what would I do with this? Oh, wow, that's awesome. See, I told you guys, it's like analog lab, it's just insane. Every time I'm listening to this, it's like I would listen for the first time. I swear I don't recognize this one. Very 80s, I love these sounds. So this one is very interesting, but what would I do with it? Yeah, from C, so. And highs? No. So I will have to build probably on the C major. Mm, not necessary. I like this. I think I'm gonna stick with this. So we've got our drums, but it's like I'm still missing something, so. Hmm. Maybe some lead? Nah. Right, I'm not gonna uh, go through all preset with you guys. Let me just try to find something myself. So I found this one. Which I think, together with the drums, will complement each other. Let me show you with the drums. I think it's awesome together. See, you've got an idea. Sorry guys, I need a coffee break because I already went through like a thousand of presets. So um, yeah. My mic. So when we stop, yeah, okay. So I think we're fine with drums and the time for synths. Synths always take forever for me because my music style is very much uh, rooted in the synths and very much 80s so i'm spending fine time to find the proper synth sound what i was trying to achieve as well is to build the track and then to find few more pads to be able to perform live because pads are long and more suitable to modulate to add lfo to cut off pads i think are the best for this because they are the longest notes so let's focus on the synths first and then we will go through pads off 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 I'm just going to type. I'm not going to specify anything because it's synths are. It could be anything. Could be sequence. Could be pad. Could be bass. But I think to narrow down to one thousand two hundred and thirty nine. Um, I think we're just going to go through pads first. Nice. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I like that. But I've got so many arpeggiators, I'm not sure how this is gonna work together. Prophet is always cool. That's perfect for modulation, for cutoff and resonance. Nice. Now that could be the one which I will then modulate. Hang on. So you need to find the sound for um, for your purpose. If you want to use a uh, modulator, then I would suggest pulsative um, instruments will be the best. Nice. Definitely was saving this one. So it's called pulsative launch. All right, next one. Okay, now maybe some sequence. I had this, I remember it was something to do with Swan. Oh, there we go, Arturia one. So I think I'm gonna use this one, convert it to audio and then trying to play with the pads or I don't know, use one of the notes from, from this whole sequence. It's like photographic Depeche Mode. Again, Depeche Mode. Oh, yes. Sad. Hang on. Again, up. But I love this up page here so much. Yeah, I will manage to do something with it. Ugh. That could be nice intro. Sky is the limit, isn't it? Add some bits to it, and you've got the beginning of the track. Oh, I like that. So much reverb. Again, profit. That's the one from the other side, from Arturia first demo. Oh, I recognize this one straight away. That's cool. Yeah, I think we've got all we need. Let's just see what I can create out of this now. So production stage is finished, all arrangement made. So time for mixing. And this is also where I would set my um, Arturia key lab to medium up with Ableton. But before I'm gonna go through all of that, let me show you my routing first. 
So all my tracks are grouped accordingly. I always start with the low end, so in this case sub, bass, um, drums, synth, piano, guitar, etc. And at the end will be effects and vocal. Groups then go to the bass and bass to the master. Bass in Ableton is basically a group, but I really like to create buses uh, for the final processing and that will be, for example, tape, just to have this analog touch. I wouldn't do any hard processing here, this is not the place. Um, that would happen on the groups, as you can see. And it's quite a lot happening here. But for my buses, it's just literally tape or console one. I wouldn't put anything else there. I like to keep my processing in the groups as well. I'm grouping saturation, I'm grouping dynamics, EQ, sidechain, and I always do gain staging using utility plugin. I leave unity gain at zero, so when I go to the session view, I have nice and clean zero unity gain and I don't have to worry about anything because the whole automation is happening here. And there is always loads of automation in my projects. So let's go back now to the arrangement view. Let me just quick show you maybe the difference with and without tape. So let's just key up our tape to F key in the keyboard. So key. Key back. So let's see. Okay, so let's just play something with the tape on, maybe starting from the bridge. The difference is really minor. I hope you can hear on YouTube. Even so, I'm using 500 series analog gear on this project. I still like to add this analog tape on the final bass. And what's happening on the two bass? Ah my Abbey Road mastering chain. I love that plugin, it's absolutely amazing. And my coloring box from Elysia. Again, fantastic gear and it gives me good analog flavor. I will show you a few tracks pre and post processing. Um, I have a this track here. So this is how it sounds from Analog Lab MIDI. converted to audio with my processing. I know the MIDI sounds more exciting in the solo, but trust me guys, once in the mix, you can't even hear it. The next one I want to show you is drums. and the original MIDI. Not a big difference, I just brought up the kick a little bit. So it's not punchy. However, in the mix, it was completely lost. So I lay it with another kick, which in solo sounds like this. Both. And original MIDI. I hope you can hear the difference. And in the mix. And another one, let's just start with the original MIDI. And after my processing. I know what you think is off tune, but in the mix sounds great. It's just the old trick to widen stereo image. Basically, copy your file, transpose one file, one semitone left, another one semitone up, and shift a little bit. Let me zoom in to show you how much I shifted here. And then you've got this beautiful stereo image and you're avoiding um, phasing issues. And let me show you in the mix. Yep, yeah, it makes all sense and it sounds great. And the last one, maybe some synths for a change. 
Intro, yeah, let's start with intro. Analog lab, MIDI. Yeah, it's pitched a little bit, just to match um, other instruments especially substance because substance was tiny bit too low so i think yeah this one is pitched a little bit barely anything but it made a huge difference remember guys to always tune your instruments together especially kicks when you add another layer just note that i have named each track after analog lab instrument preset and for the virtual instrument which is other than analog lab i have also included the name and the preset number so you can easily identify them in description of this video you will find a link with arturia kilab demo ableton file file includes all audio files post processing and the midi files you can then play with the midi files and come up with the different sounds and compare them to my audio files but now the fun part let me debug ableton live with arturia kilab essential So I am in the MIDI control center first. Let me call MCC, it's quicker. MCC doesn't work when Ableton is open, so I have to set one at a time. Just a quick recap, analog lab, all mapping is set by default, you can't make any changes there. Same with DW. Now, if you want to use Keylab to control any other VST, then you have to use this in user template. So you can assign anything which is highlighted in red, like pads, keyboard, faders, and knobs in your user template. Today I'm going to show you how to use Keylab in a few different ways. Firstly, I'm going to use Keylab in an analog mode. So on your controller, map select analog lab. But I also want to use Keylab to control some of my audio samples for pitch modulation, maybe some LFO resonance, etc. And this will require to set user one template. To complicate this even more, I want to use my keyboard to play another instrument, not simultaneously, but completely separate. There are a few options, but I will toggle between analog lab and user one mode analog lab keyboard is set by default on channel 1, so I will have to set my keyboard in user 1 template on channel 2. I will also set these two pads for another instrument to play different notes. So let's start with the pads. To play different notes on the pads, we leave in MIDI note, gate and channel 3. G3, another one. MIDI note, gate, channel 3 and this time D3. Last to set will be keyboard. Channel 2 and all set. Now store 2, save it. All done. Let's go now to Ableton and set equivalent in routing there. I have already set these three MIDIs. So kill up essential 61 here, channel 2, same, channel 3, and analog lab. Let's just see if everything is working properly. Analog lab. Now let's swap to user one. Our pads now. Our user one is set correctly, so let's go to audio samples for mapping now. So what I have done here, I have created FX rack with some sloppy delay. I have set attack fader to switch on and off rack. And I have also assigned cut off knob to my macro one. So when I'm turning, it works together. And obviously all the parameters inside the VSD I have mapped to macro one. So let me show you how I've done and then I will explain you the reason behind it. So MIDI map. First, let's assign our device on and off to attack fader. Let me unmap it. Now let's assign macro one to cut off knob. Macro one and macro one. Let's just test it. So now every time I'm gonna move my cut off knob, all works together. Perfect. 
Now, so why I have mapped everything to macro and then on top of it also set this to switch it off? The reason is very simple. When you play effects rack and you come from dry to wet signal, you don't want this sudden cut of your effect rack because that just sounds odd. So you want to fading down. I'm fading downward again, fine, but I will also, at some point, when the gain goes all the way down, I want to switch off my rack so it doesn't interfere with other instruments and effects and there is no some leftover of delay, etc. So let me quickly show you what I mean by that. <laughs> There is no sudden cut off and it just sounds nice and blended. Okay, so let's go to another one. These are all analog lab midis converted to audio samples. I'm going to assign heat dry wet signal to my DK fader this time. So again, midi, dry wet, click on the DK, job done, midi back. Let me show you how I'm going to use this in the track. Again, I have created group with auto filter and tape reverb space. So let MIDI map LFO in auto filter to LFO knob in Keylab. MIDI, click on LFO, then move LFO knob in Keylab, all assigned. MIDI back. Then I'm going to use the same LFO knob in Keylab, but this time to switch on and off the rack. MIDI, click on on and off button, and LFO. MIDI back. So what's happening here is every time I'm moving my LFO knob, I'm not only switching on the full rack, but I'm also increasing the amount of LFO in auto filter. And there is a reason for it. Again, to avoid the sudden cut off of the whole rack, I'm slowly going to decrease LFO and only when it comes to the certain point, which I can define in my mapping, only then the whole rack will switch off. Now I'm going to assign master fader to macro one. MIDI, macro, and master fader. And then I will just map dry wet signal in tape and resonance in auto filter to macro one. Yeah. So every time I'm moving my master fader in clap down, I'm gradually decreasing the amount of my FX rack. Again, I have a nice fade to the point and when I'm happy, I can easily switch it off. So let me show you in action. assign all of this obviously in the simplest way but I found this set suits my performance just experiment with it so much fun <laughs>
I hope you liked the video. It was really a quick snip of my production processing, but I hope I inspired you to use Skilab, um, especially with the analog lab, because it really has a potential. And I love to play with the MIDI instead of samples. Nowadays, everyone using samples. I mean, MIDI is fun. Obviously, you have to convert it to the audio because then the manipulation is much easier. But just to create some ID, you should definitely start to use MIDI more. All right, so now I hope you're gonna create some awesome tracks and you're gonna share with me in your comments. Please leave a comment below. The community on this channel is amazing, so please share your thoughts and your projects and how you manage to use your key labs. And if you want to support Agnes a little bit more, then please follow me on social media. I will leave the links below. You can also find them on Amaji website. Every subscriber, follower and every comment really motivates me to do more content like this. Because otherwise, what's the point? And about the point, let's go to the point because it's giveaway time. Okay. Ta-da! Yes, so today I'm giving away my Audient ID14 audio interface. And this is exactly the same audio interface which I've used when I recorded the first Arturia demo video, which was so successful. In 2019, I've released Arturia demo video, recorded in my bedroom out of spontaneous moment. I think I just bought my clip at that time and I really wanted to share with people. I had completely no idea how to record video. And geez, nearly 100,000 views. You guys absolutely loved this video. I didn't expect it at all. Recorded in my bedroom on a Samsung Galaxy phone, literally placed on my shelf. It was so spontaneous, but looks like you guys really like this content. As you can see, loads changed since then. I've built my dedicated studio, Amaji Studio. And by the way, if you want to see how we were building this studio during lockdown, then I will leave the link below. Three parts video, how we came from nothing to this. I then released a few tracks, which you can see on the streaming platforms. And one of them is so loved by all of you from Arturia Demo 1 video, the track which is called The Other Sides. And then I also won Mixbus TV remix competitions. Out of 500 remixes, I was in the top four. So that was a huge success of mine. Everything you can find on amaji-studio.com. So everything is going in the right direction. And a suggestion of thank you, for my subscribers, I'm giving away this interface. This is an amazing audio interface and you're gonna be really happy with it. And all you need to do is to subscribe and put a comment, count me in. And make sure that you subscribe publicly because otherwise I won't be able to see if you are really a subscriber or not. And if you are already subscribed to my channel and still would like to enter, then please leave a comment, count me in. So it's that simple. Subscribe and leave a comment, count me in. So don't miss out your giveaway. Subscribe, like, bell, follow me on social media. See you the next time.